Welcome once again to FullBibleTimeline.com. We're using the online digital zooming presentation of the timeline called a Prezi. And today we're going to examine a part of the chart right here that deals with reading the chart and understanding the years in the chart and how they work. They're going to be quite surprised at how easy it is to read through the chart. So there's a, a series of uh, colored numbers going through the chart. We're going to just start with this yellow series here. It starts at zero with Adam. And this number system moves all the way through the chart, all the way through time to present day, nonstop counting time from the fall in the garden to present day. Now, how do we know when the fall took place? Well, we know that Adam began tracking birthdays when the fall took place because he was eternal in the garden. And the Bible says in Genesis 5, 3, that Adam was 130 years old when he had Seth. That means 130 years before that event, Adam began keeping track of birthdays. And we know that Adam lived for 930 years and then Adam died. So we know that Adam began to keep track of birthdays when he, beca when he became mortal. In the garden, there was no reason to keep track of birthdays, like there'll be no reason for you to keep track of them when you're in heaven. So the moment that Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and death entered Adam's physical body, he began to keep track of these birthdays. And this is how we know in scripture, Genesis 5, 3, Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born. So to explain how this works, the white numbers are the number of years between father and son. So there was 130 years between Adam and Seth. There was 105 years between Seth and his son Enosh. And the yellow numbering system, as I mentioned, is that non-stop count right through to present day. The black numbering system that you see underneath the yellow are the common BC dates that we, if you study history and you uh, read about something taking place in 2500 BC, uh, that is the dating system there. So you can correlate between the nonstop count from Adam and the events circled uh, or centered around the BC dates. Underneath each name of each individual, now keep in mind this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ from Matthew chapter 1 and we're using the genealogies in Genesis 5 to calculate the math. And then we're using uh, historical records. We're using the Babylonian Talmud. We're using um, uh, other methods, but predominantly uh, the King James Bible and history to uh, piece together when these events took place. And you'll see that it's quite succinct and um, quite powerful. So underneath each name, you have Seth here. He was born in the year 130. Enosh, his son, was born in the year 235. And we know that because Adam was 130 when he had Seth. Seth was 105 when he had Enosh. Underneath each name is the verse from the genealogy where this math is derived from. And you're welcome to examine the math yourself. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here and show you the name bars that are associated certainly with the first uh, 1600 years of history, first 2000 years of history. And we know this uh, simply by studying the genealogies. So we're gonna uh, see that Adam's lifeline is represented by this first black line, and it runs both uh, vertical and horizontal. And horizontally, so we can see all the families, all the children that Adam influenced. Adam was alive for Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech. Adam was still alive for centuries and centuries influencing uh, that righteous line that uh, ultimately went straight through to Jesus Christ. At the top of each name bar, this is Enoch's, you can see that Enoch lived a total of 365 years. And at the very end of, of each bar is the actual year the individual died, simply by doing the math. Enoch died in the year 987. Adam died in the year 930 naturally, because time began with Adam's uh, fall. Seth died in the year 1042, and so on. And so you can see quite easily 
how these lives all intersected each other and who was alive for uh, whose, uh, for, for their, their children and grandchildren and so forth. So that's how the name bars work and the numbering system works and it'll take you straight through to the flood and the flood events. We'll go into the flood in another video. Now, the numbering system will go all the way through to the birth of Jesus Christ. And here at the birth of Christ, we have his birth taking place in 3 BC. We have the introduction of what we call the Gregorian calendar, our calendar today. And that runs all the way through to present day. And you can see below, the yellow numbering system has still kept counting from the fall of man all the way through to present. And that continues on all the way through to present day. So that is how the chart can be read. Across the top of the chart, as I've mentioned before, we have ancient kingdoms that ruled the world. For example, we'll zoom in here to Egyptian Middle Kingdom, and then a period of time in Egyptian history called the Second Intermediate Period, and there was a First Intermediate Period as well. These are periods in time when a non-Egyptian sat on the throne. And so these periods of time in Egyptian history are outlined at the top of the chart, and they move all the way through Egyptian history into Persian, Babylonian, Greek, Roman, and it runs across the top of the chart so that you can see how they parallel to biblical history. For example, uh, the flood takes place, scripturally we can see, in the year 1656. That's 1656 from the fall of man. And we move straight up, that's this blue line here, following the flood. And that year takes place in, an, uh, in the, a period of time in Egyptian history called the Old Kingdom. And it coincides with Egyptian stories of the flood as they are written in Egyptian history. Uh, for Egyptian history notes that during this Old Kingdom period, a great flood did take place. So there is proofs that back up biblical uh, story and biblical uh, evidence. And throughout the chart, as I've explained before, we have these blowouts. And we'll go into each one of those a little bit later. But I just wanted you to see the, the, uh, the numbering system, how it works. And so you can see that post-flood, you can see all the, uh, the generations after the flood, the years in between father and son. We can closely examine the, uh, the actual lives of these individuals like Abraham that we'll get into and see that Abraham lived for 175 years and died in the year 2123. And his father, Terah, lived for 205 years and died in the year 2083. And so forth through the chart so you can see how these lives intersected. We get into uh, the Exodus, and uh, I'll get into all of this in other videos, uh, and they'll all be named appropriately so you can follow along and just watch the video that you're interested in. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope you enjoy the full Bible timeline.